Let's join Wade on the range as he gets ready for his hunt with the Performance Center 460 XVR. Uh, right now I'm preparing for an upcoming uh, handgun hunt. I'm going to take out the Smith & Wesson 460 XVR. I've got a Trijicon uh, red dot basically set up on it and I'm going to be hunting on a pond dam and this pond dam kind of overlooks a, a you know the back end of the dam which is filled with oaks and it's a valley and there's a little kind of a creek that runs through that area and my shot opportunities I'm going to say are I can probably see 60 80 yards so I could shoot that far but most of my shot opportunities based on what we're seeing on scouting cameras are going to be 25 to 35 yards so what I want to do is in my mind is prepare for that I want to make sure that ballistically my 460 is set up for that shot obviously the 460 can form tremendous distances with a lot of downrange energy and accuracy but for this situation here I want to make sure that I'm maybe a half an inch inch high when I'm down on the range at, at 25 so that if I do shoot out a little further you know I'm going to be okay and, and I know my aiming points there so come down to the range set in a same or you know basically basically elevation type seat. Now in the blind, I'll be sitting in a Cabela's uh, chair that swivels and everything. It's real comfortable. I am going to take the death grip box pod in there because it's going to give me the best stability. And, and for me, I always want to have the best stability when I'm hunting. And then also while I'm down on the range, I'm going to do some trigger uh, practice, you know, just getting reacclimated with that trigger pull because everything's different, whether I'm shooting a crossbow, shooting my compound, shooting a rifle, and kind of just get in that mindset and, and be prepared with all the gear that I'm going to take into the field in that situation. Let's learn more about the Performance Center 460 XVR that Wade is using for this hunt. What's unique about the gun is the fact that it has an integral rail. You can mount your optics, whether it be a scope or a red dot to it. Fiber optic sights for quicker target acquisition. It's got a muzzle brake to help reduce recoil. Also helping reduce recoil is the fact that it's got an unfluted cylinder, which adds a little bit more weight to the gun. A Hogue overmolded grip with a gel pack, once again, helping your hand with the recoil. And it's got a Smith & Wesson Performance Center action where you can expect about a three and a half pound single action trigger pull and around a 10 pound double action trigger pull. So another great feature about the 460 is the fact that you can shoot three calibers with the gun. Not only the 460, but the 454 Casul and the 45 Long Colt. So for those days that you're out on the range and you just want to do a little practicing, that 45 Long Colt is a dream to shoot. And when it comes time to go hunting, you grab the 460 to 454 Casul, and that'll get the job done on just about any North American game animal. People ask me, what differentiates performance center products from our standard products? Well, you know, first off, the products leave with an action package out of, out of the Performance Center. So like I said, the trigger pulls are lighter and smoother, and you can expect about a three and a half pound single action trigger pull, and a double action trigger that's gonna be about 10 pounds. And that's significantly different than our standard products. You also get specialty sights, specialty grips, specialty finishes. I mean, when you look at a Performance Center product, you definitely see a difference between standard products and our products. So you know, if you wanna find out more about what Smith & Wesson Performance Center really is, you can visit our website. We've got a lot of videos up there, uh, YouTube videos that you can really take a look at all the different products we offer and get a real feeling for how we manufacture them, how we build them, and you know, just what they're all about. We're joining Wade on day two of his handgun hunt. Yesterday he had several encounters with some great bucks, but they never maneuvered into a place where Wade could take a shot. I mean, there was a dozen to 15 bucks come through there yesterday. It's really pretty exciting. Of a, of a place to sit and uh, we're on a pond dam looking down into a bottom that's got a mix of live oaks. I mean they look like to me they're just eating and chilling and bedding and relaxing. I mean you could just constantly see deer moving in a lot of different directions. It's a place the deer want to be this this time of year, a place where the acorns fall first. You know you get overflow from the ponds, keeps it uh, everything growing more lush right there and so I just man it's where they want to be. So it's where we're going to be set up on that pond dam and uh, we got that pond behind us where some big ones come to water and, and you know, maybe one of those deer will get out in front of us. We know the deer in the area, and that's the number one thing when you're climbing up into a stand. As the sun begins to shine through the canopy of oak trees, a bachelor group of bucks have been feeding in front of the blind. With all the trees and branches in the way, Wade can't get a clear shot on any of them.
A super wide buck that was in the group that drank at the pond last night has now moved into view. Only one problem, the deer is standing directly behind a tree. since we took the shot. I've been in there trying to eat an apple to calm down. My uh, heart's pounding, is going hard from that whole morning and the visions of last night and how this this was just an awesome hunt. And there were several great bucks out there. It's just, I mean, they're just was doing everything in here, milling around. It's just a matter of getting one to get into position. And, and finally, we got one to get into position. And that was freaking awesome. I mean, I think I smoked him. I mean, it just looks like Double lungs, you know, that's where I was aiming. It's probably 25, 27 yards max. He got behind that tree and he stood behind that tree forever. My hands were <laughs> sweating and shaking. And whew, that's where you practice, you know, the muscle memory just takes over and, and you just, you just it, it just all happens. It makes you just go get my hands on him. I mean, he, I mean, when you gotta turn your head sideways to get through the brush, that's a giant. He's really kicking it out right there. Oh, I see big deer down right there. He's right there, I mean, uh, the 460 did his job. That's gonna be a 60 yard, 70 yard run. Oh, man. <laughs> look at that. That's what you wanna see. I mean, look how big that deer looks from here. Look at that. Oh, that's amazing. I mean, that's the most incredible hunt. The whole time we were sitting, you could see all these deer. Now you get kind of a view, really what's going on. You know, they're getting in the shade and they come in, they drift out and they go back out and you'd see them wandering everywhere. God, what a deer. What a deer. What a deer. 
Holy cow. What a deer. Wow. Wow, what a deer. Oh my gosh. What a deer. Look at that. I mean, that's an absolute giant. Look at that, it is so cool the way it goes up right there and there's even a little tie. Those almost grew together right there. God, he's wide. Look at the brows. What a phenomenal deer. All the way around. I mean, it just destroyed him. I mean, that 460, that's, that's some damage right there. I mean, he was slightly, slightly, slightly quartering towards me. And, you know, this was, was where I was going to blow through. And I knew, based on what I've been able to do with that gun on the range and in the past in hunting situations, that, you know, it was going to perform perfect for what I was doing. And, you know, with the, whether you're hunting with open sights or hunting with something like what I've got on here from Trigicon, that RMR, Red Dot, I mean, it's a fast, easy way to acquire the target. I mean, I could sit right there. I had the bog death grip. I mean, you just couldn't have had a more stable shot. I mean, you just pretty much could go down there and put it where you want to. That's phenomenal. Look at that deer.